Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at two of the hottest selling camera gimbals on the market right now. This is the Jiyun Crane and this is the Ronin S. So you can probably tell by looking straight away, the Ronin S is a much larger unit. Uh, it has a heavier capacity, it has bigger motors, has a bigger battery, um, and it can take bigger cameras. Whereas the Crane um, is much smaller, packs down more compactly. It can't carry nearly as much weight as the Ronin S can, um, but it can still get you out of a lot of scrapes and is a useful little tool. Mechanically, these are both single-handed three-axis gimbal stabilizers. So each of them has three motors, three brushless gimbals, uh, one for pan, one for tilt, and one for roll. Every time you move your hand in one direction, the sensor in the motor detects that and then directs the motor to move, compensating your movement. So all the small little bumps and uh, imperfections are negated in your camera work. You end up with these beautiful smooth camera movements. These um, have been coming out for a couple of years now. Uh, I've used them, but not with that huge amount of success. I thought the Tilter um, Gravity Gimbal was interesting, but it was too small to hold the um, C200, which is what I do a lot of my um, professional work with. Uh, the Crane is definitely still too small to hold the C200, but the Ronin S um, is made almost expressly for that purpose. When I get back to my studio and back to my camera, I'll be able to put bigger lenses on this guy uh, and take it for a proper test drive. But for now, I just have it. Um, again, we're in Northern Vermont, I'm by the lake. Um, I'm gonna get some more shots of all the beautiful um, wilderness and uh, wildlife around here. Um, but I only have the uh, Canon M50 and also a 5D Mark II. Uh, shooting magic lantern that I can um, get some shots of and show you guys what results can be produced uh, with these machines. I got the crane first. A friend of mine had bought it, uh, was going away, and he lent it to me uh, to go to take on holiday. I liked it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a pretty typical um, camera piece manufacturer, nothing special. The buttons feel okay without being great. Um, it's light, it's portable. It comes in a small little um, hard case uh, that you could put in your um, carry-on luggage. It's the, just the kind of thing you want to put your um, XC10, XC15, M50 on um, and get really beautiful, smooth um, motion. I mean, it's really just a, a selfie stick on steroids. A Ronin S. It's a whole nother level of build quality. Um, the buttons feel super professional. They're what you would get on a, you know, the build quality feels similar to what you get on a high-end Canon Cinema camera or Arri Alexa. Um, it has, you know, more buttons. It's more intelligently laid out. The software works a lot better. It has this added little um, uh, focus dial uh, on the side of the handle that lets you, um, it's not compatible with every camera right now. I think only the GH5 and some other ones. Uh, but it lets you essentially potentially pull focus um, with your camera while you're while you're doing gimbal moves. Another thing I really liked about the Ronin S is that it comes with this awesome little collapsible um, tripod on the bottom or stand, I guess. Uh, it's not only all great to be able to place it on a table where you're balancing your camera. You can also, and I'm pressed for room here, but brace it against your chest. Uh, while you're operating it and take some weight out of your hands, um, which I found much more um, uh, amenable to use than the tilted gravity or the crane. Um, the crane's lighter, but that doesn't mean when you put a heavier camera on it, your deltoids don't ache and it becomes really tough to hold. All the crane movement is with your thumb, whereas a lot of the important movements um, on the Ronin S have this uh, activated by this little trigger at the back. It means that you have uh, much more ability to keep your shot smoother, keep your um, keep a firm grip on the um, battery as you're moving around with the camera. And what a lot of people don't appreciate with these one-handed gimbals and two-handed gimbals, for that matter, like the Ronin or the um, the, uh, the Movi, is that they don't remove the bouncing movement of walking. So if you want to do a steady cam-like shot, you need to sort of walk in this kind of crazy duck way where you squat down um, and then sort of walk. Uh, without going up and down um, and it gives a it takes some getting used to but once you master it it gives you really smooth footage the advantage of this over a steady cam which you know is tens of thousands of dollars or uh, a double-handed gimbal is that you can get through smaller spaces 
I think the, the absolute killer app would be to have this on, you know, a, an easy rig from the above or a steady cam from below that would take out that bounce and let you move a lot freer and also leave a second hand to operate the camera, be it pull focus or um, exposure or whatever else you want to do. Um, which you can't do with a normal two-handed gimbal. Both of these work interactively with an app. Um, the DJI one is a lot better made than the uh, GE one, um, but they still work uh, both on Bluetooth. You can uh, adjust the force feedback of the motors. You can adjust the speed of the pan and tilt. Ronin is a lot more intuitive. It took me a little bit, uh, it took me quite a few internet searches to work out how the crane works. But once I got it up and running, it's not that hard. Um, both work really great in inverted mode um, where you can get you know, really nice drifting shots along just above the ground. Here's the uh, Ronin S case. Uh, if you're traveling with this, this is gonna be, have to be checked into your luggage. It's not gonna fit in your, uh, your overnight bag. Um, whereas, ah. Uh, Whereas the, um, the crane, uh, you can pack away without any problem. Balancing both of these was pretty simple. Uh, with a small little camera like the uh, M50 piece of cake, took me two or three minutes. With a bigger camera with a bigger lens, they both have lens attachments, uh, which should be trickier to do, especially when you lose balance as you zoom in and out on bigger lenses. But um, once I'm back in California, I will do a full review of the Ronin S with the C200 and um, cinema zoom lenses and everyone can see how it performs under professional circumstances. So that's my wrap up of the Ronin S versus the GG Crane. Um, hopefully that was helpful to someone. Leave your questions in the comments. Like I said, more videos coming on both of these in a couple of weeks, uh, but I just thought I'd let you know my first impressions and if anyone's looking to buy these, um, my final word would be the Crane's a lot more transportable, works perfectly with um, smaller cameras, whereas the uh, Ronin S a um, lot more intuitive, more heavy duty. Uh, it's gonna have room to expand. So uh, you can put a much larger cinema style camera on this guy, as well as working it with smaller cameras. Whereas uh, the, the Crane is pretty much a prosumer camera gimbal. Thanks very much for watching guys. I will see you next time.